Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very strange topic, the pseudo-sensory loss, the false sensory loss. So if a person comes and says that he's got sensory loss, but in reality there's no sensory loss, he's just acting, he's just feigning illness, perhaps to gain sympathy or for the reasons best known to him. If he's feigning illness, if he says he's got sensory loss, but there's no true sensory loss, it's just a false sensory loss. How are we going to evaluate and find out whether he's got true sensory loss or it's just a false sensory loss. If it's a false sensory loss, how are we going to definitely say it's going to be a false sensory loss? In last uh, video, we saw that if a person says he's got a false weakness, a pseudo hemiplegia, how we can find out whether it's a false hemiplegia or a true hemiplegia by a wonderful sign known as Hoover's sign. So by Hoover's sign, we can find out whether it's a true hemiplegia or a pseudo hemiplegia. Likewise, how are we going to find out whether it's a pseudo sensory loss or a true sensory loss? And if it's a pseudo sensory loss, how are we going to confirm it? We have three wonderful methods by which we can say that it is a pseudo sensory loss. It is because of a strange sensory dermatomal pattern. We exploit this strange dermatomal sensory pattern to say that the person is having a pseudo sensory loss. But what is this strange sensory dermatomal pattern? The extremity innervation that is the upper limbs and the lower limbs, the extremity innervation is complex. It is not straightforward as in the trunk. The upper limb and the lower limb, the extremity innervation is complex. Why? Because of the migration of the limb birds during embryonic development. Because of the migration of limb birds during embryonic development, the extremity innervation is complex. So let's see what happens in the upper limbs and the lower limbs. It's very interesting and exciting. When we take the upper limbs because of the migration of the upper limb, upper limbs during the embryonic development, what happens? The C4, C5, they just come out. So C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, but T1 and T2 come below the clavicle. So above the clavicle, above the clavicle, it is C4 and C5, but immediately below the clavicle, it is T1 and T2. So generally there's an overlap of sensory dermatomes. So if a person has got a true sensory loss, if there is a true sensory loss of C4 or C5, adjacent sensory dermatomes like C6 or C7 should get involved but not T1 and T2, which are very far off from C4, C5. So if a person says he's got sensory loss above the clavicle, as well as below the clavicle, but the upper limb is intact, that means it's a false sensory loss. It is a pseudo sensory loss. He's acting because above the clavicle, it is C4, C5 and below the clavicle, it is not C6, C7, but T1 and T2 very far off from C4, C5. So if above the clavicle C4, C5 is involved, the adjacent sensory dermatomals that is C6, C7 should get involved, not T1, T2 which is below the clavicle. So if a person says he's got involvement of both sensory loss above the clavicle as well as below the clavicle, it is pseudo, it is false, it cannot. It cannot happen. C4, C5 at one extreme and T1, T2 at the other extreme, it cannot happen. If it is, if it has to happen, that is C4, C5 and T1, T2, 
the other dermatomes in between also should get affected. That means C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, T2. But only C4, C5 and other roots that is C6, C7, C8 being normal and then T1, T2 again to get in, involved is cannot be explained by neuroscience. So if a person comes with a sensory loss above the clavicle as well as below the clavicle but the upper limb sensations are normal that means it is acting it is a pseudo sensory loss it is a false sensory loss very interesting so if we know the basic fundamental concepts how we can find out that the person is having a pseudo sensory loss if we know these basic concepts we can trick the patient to find out whether he's got true sensory loss or a pseudo sensory loss. Like in the upper limbs, in the lower limbs also, because of the migration of the limbs during embryonic development, the extremity innervation is complex, the lower limbs. So over the thighs, it is L1 and L2. But when it comes to the inner aspect of the thighs, it is not L3 or L4 it becomes S3, S4, S5. The inner part of the thighs and the perianal region becomes S2, S3, S4 and S5. Basically S3, S4, S5. So a person complains of loss of the sensations over the anterior part of the thighs and medial and the perianal area without the sensory loss below the knee. Again, the person is acting. It cannot happen. If a person has got sensory loss over L2, L3 and S3, S4, S5, the in-between segments also should get involved. But the in-between segments not getting involved, only L2, L3 and then immediately the adjacent area S3, S4, S5 is not scientifically possible. But the person is not aware of the strange sensory dermatomes. So he thinks since they are adjacent areas, the anterior part of the thigh, medial part of the thigh and the, and the perianal area are adjacent areas. So he says there is a sensory loss if it is acting. Likewise in the upper limbs above the clavicle and below the clavicle are adjacent areas. So he thinks when the above the clavicle gets affected below the clavicle also there should be sensory loss and he says there is a sensory loss above the clavicle and below the clavicle because they are adjacent areas. But though they are adjacent areas the dermatomal distribution is far apart. So knowing the segmental anatomy, knowing the sensory dermatomal anatomy, we are able to find out whether the person is having a true sensory loss or a pseudo sensory loss by checking out C4, C5 above the clavicle and T1, T2 below the clavicle and L1, L2 anterior part of the thigh and S3, S4, S5 medial part and the perianal area. We can say whether the person is having true sensory loss or a pseudo sensory loss. And the third method is that person is not aware of the anatomy. So when he says that one side there is a sensory loss, he says exactly across the midline on one side there is a sensory loss. So it cuts the forehead, nose, lips in the middle part, anterior part, the middle part of the chest, the middle part of the abdomen. Exactly if it cuts the center and he says on one side there is sensory loss, the other side the sensations are normal. It cannot be explained by the sensory root involvement or the sensory pattern. So exactly across the midline, the sensations are lost. The other side is absolutely intact. It cannot happen according to the anatomy. But the person and the patient are not aware of this anatomy. And so when they are trying to deceive the doctor or the, or the medical experts, he would say the sensory loss is exactly in the middle on one side, which cannot happen. So again, if the person says that the sensory loss exactly from the midline to the other side, that means it is a pseudo sensory loss. It's a false sensory loss. It is not a true sensory loss. So by knowing the fundamental concepts of neuroanatomy, the sensory pattern, we can enjoy the clinical neurology. This is the joy of clinical neurology. Without investigation, CT, MRI or other investigations, we are able to say whether a person has got a true sensory loss or a pseudo sensory loss by a sound clinical knowledge of neuroanatomy. This is the joy of clinical neurology.
I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions, feedback, comments, kindly post onto my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts, and my FB page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.